Hello everybody, it's Julia here with another in my video series on Learn Tarot and um, today we're going to be looking at the Queens. So um, I'm just going to give you a little introduction about court cards and Queens and then I'm going to put some timestamps in this video so you we can look at each of the um, individual Queens um, without you having to watch the whole thing if you don't want to. So if we think about the major arcana as representing the questioner's psychological state, um, the court cards expand this information with details of relationships and personalities and really with the creative potential of a person in a much more specific way. Um, they act as a bridge between the major and the minor arcana I like to think that in their higher realms, they represent the 16 traits um, or 16 types of self-mastery. And in their lower realms, they can represent the 16 traits or behaviours that we sometimes revert to or use to cope with a very difficult and chaotic world. Um, the court cards can represent a major archetype for you and quite often in a reading I think they do um, or sometimes they can represent a significant other in your life. So if we think about um, the elements, the pages represent earth and they are like the fertile soil in which all of life can grow. The knights represent air and they kind of spread the idea of the kingdom like spreading the seeds. The queens represent water and they're the ones who make it real. Um, they are like the rain, they bring forth life from the earth. They signify the creative force, um, they can indicate a time of growth and development and they make things real. They are really the reflection of the Empress. So I'm just going to pause the video and then I will be back with the Queen of Wands. So the Queen of Wands, this is an independent, um, popular, charming, enigmatic, charismatic type personality, feminine personality that draws people in. This is the feminine mastery of fire. Um, you could say that the Queen of Wands is a person who ignites the passions of others and she would very definitely shine in the public eye. Um, this is a person that could light up a room when they enter. Um, they radiate warmth and energy. They can be restless, burning with various sort of passionate ideas and desires but can equally be gentle and loving with their children and their families. They can be very creative with boundless energy. They can have a strong leadership and inspirational skills and would be very definitely very charming and sociable hostesses. I think these characters are often found in entertainment. Um, they could be leaders or activists, singers, actresses. And at times they could have trouble stepping out of the limelight, I think. <laughs> but these, after all, are very magical um, feminine principles. These are people that are very much in touch with the spirit and the magic of the universe. As we can see here with the black cat, we've got the sunflowers, the wand, you know, it's all kind of there, isn't it? If we look at the cosmic tarot, we can see um, we can see somebody with a, a strong will, I think, here. If we look at her facial expression here, this is a person who's used to getting what she wants, I think. She, to me, she looks like Elizabeth Taylor in her younger days. So this is this is a born actress, isn't it? And then we're going to have a look at the Mary L deck because it's extremely different um, in its imagery from, from the other cards that I'm going to show you. 
So this is, it says here, the jaguar is a powerful totem in South America, where he is the spirit of the jungle. A shaman or witch will be accompanied by him when travelling into other words, worlds for strength and protection. The, um, the witch can even partially become the jaguar, a shapeshifter. So the queen here is the master of the internal jungle and internal energy. The dark forest one must often transverse in the suit of wands. As the king is the master of external sun energy, she is the master of the internal and external fire. The flame in the temple of your body. She wears a shard of obsidian on her headdress. An obsidian is a volcanic glass and besides being used as a fine weapon, it can be polished smooth into a mirror with which one can see themselves. She can show you yourself, the greatest gift you can receive. She provides a safe, warm and abundant environment where you can grow from a small cub to a powerful jaguar yourself. She helps you develop into your full potential with a clear vision of yourself and your own creativity. In her upright position, she represents vitality, abundant life, energy and willpower. She's audacious, courageous, bold and dauntless. This is an animated, vibrant and powerful person with life-making and life-giving properties. In her reversed or lower realms, this card can represent detachment, indifference, listlessness, being passive or vacant. So that's really interesting, isn't it? I love that card. So I shall be back in a mo with the Queen of Cups. So the Queen of Cups, this is the empath, full of feminine understanding and nurturing energy. She cares for all things she, and she feels much more than she can act. She's the very essence of compassion. In her higher realms, this is a sensitive, receptive, um, feminine energy, a person who, who could know what was wrong with you before you even open your mouth. She could be the emotional fix-it woman, somebody that you'd go to with all your troubles. She can be shy, self-effacing, dreamy, mysterious, affectionate and loving. She's completely in touch with the inner world of feeling and she's imaginative with hypnotic feminine power. She would be an adoring friend and mother and she could be poetic and artistic. I think these feminine characters are often this kind of mum's mum um, at school, you know, somebody that that looks after all the children. Um, she could be psychic, a healer, a counsellor, an artist, a writer, and she's definitely highly sensitive. In her lower realms, she could suffer from mood swings, um, she could have hormonal problems, um, she could suffer with seasonal affective disorder, addictions of one kind or another, she could be classed as neurotic and suffer with psychological problems. She can sometimes seem out of touch with reality and could even suffer with a victim mentality. In the cosmic tarot here, we've got um, a much more gentle and um, receptive facial expression here than the Queen of Wands. Um, She's got, she stood in front of a lake. Um, she's got a fan with fishes on. This is very much the Queen of Cups. And then in the Mary L deck, let me get my book. Let's see where the Queen of Cups is. This beautiful card here. The Queen of Cups is the Holy Grail. She's the reservoir and container of all of our subconscious and ancestral wisdom. She is the dark waters of the abyss. Emotions are an aspect of this card 
and the suit of cups, but they are just a skin of velvet covering the tiger with unremorseful fang beneath. Interesting. Each queen has her own gem that speaks to her character. The pearls are something here that are built up over a long time, layer by layer, until they are something beautiful and precious. Water is so soft and yin, yet it is so powerful as it shapes the earth. It does so with slow consistency, collective action over long periods of time, one drip at a time, one wave at a time, moving one grain of sand at a time. But it can wear away rock, carve canyons, shape mountains, and is the source of all life. Beneath her beautiful, perfect surface lies Tiamat, the primordial goddess of the sea. In her upright position, this is a bottomless well of love and compassion, an emotional abundance, a person who acts with benevolence, mercy, kindness and forgiving, somebody at home with the natural ebb and flow of things, of feminine cycles, no thoughts of time, just the slow rhythmic ebb and flow of the current of the universe, beauty in perfect rhythm. Reversed, this could represent emptiness, empty of kindness and compassion, trying to accomplish things through hard rather than soft means, and out of step or out of rhythm and unable to find the natural flow. And I think that's very much the Queen of Cups when she's in her lower realm, isn't it? She's out of touch with the natural flow of things. It's like her cycles have been disrupted, <laughs> which happens to us women, doesn't it? <laughs> Sometimes. So I shall be back next with the Queen of Swords. So the Queen of Swords... This is a mature and feminine power, um, a mature and feminine power of the mind. In this card here, we can see her heart, her hand extended outwards towards her people, I guess. She's still receptive as she's a queen. Um, so she's kind of inviting you forward to talk to her, to get her wisdom. Her sword is pointed at the sky at the cosmos and up towards the highest truth really she'll always tell you what you need to know not always necessarily what you want to know <laughs> she's quick thinking um, intelligent logical analytical organized quick-witted loyal stable intensely perceptive she could be described as a walking encyclopedia and could hold her own on most subjects. She's able to absorb information and relate it back clearly and articulately. There's a strong desire for a knowledge of people here and she's able to bear suffering with strength. She can sometimes be referred to as the widow of the Queen's um, we can't see it in that card, but I'm sure I have seen in other cards, it's almost like the coffin of her husband has been taken away. She's she's like the widow, really. So this is a, a feminine energy that is likely to be involved in a job which involves talking in some way. And that could be anything from psychology, mental health, law, politics, sciences. It should be a good researcher or a good radio presenter, I think. But she's definitely a person who doesn't suffer fools gladly. In her lower realms, she could be sharp-tongued, lonely, sad, prudish, aloof, judgmental, cold and nosy. She's the most queen-like, I think, of all the queens. And... Um, when I did a video recently on the archetype of the Queen, when Queen Elizabeth, our Queen in the UK, passed, I thought I'd do a little video on what the archetype of the Queen actually means. I did think that she represented the Queen of Swords, at least 
in her public face. She could ver very well be um, a much warmer character in her private life, but I think her public face was very much the Queen of Swords. And we can see that sharp um, inquiring mind here in the cosmic tarot this is somebody very wise and sharp looking and again I think doesn't suffer fools gladly let's have a look at the Mary L card there is the Queen of Swords there we are so this is a very unusual card isn't it we've got these crows here and it says Huggin and Munin where the eyes of Odin his companions each day at dawn he sent them out to fly over Midgard and at dinner time they returned with all the news of the world their names mean thought and memory and Odin always worried that one day they would not come back but they always did um, what else have we got here? The face of the Queen of Swords is here in the landscape. She is everything and each one, communicating and experiencing each other in states of separation and togetherness. Mundanely or profanely, this Queen provides an environment where one can use their minds, have ideas, think and understand and have and gain knowledge. Eventually, this is the place between heaven and hell that one can both fall from grace and then redeem oneself, become experienced, ride back into eternity a person who has completely fulfilled their will and potential. In her upright position, this card can represent communicating stories, memories, histories, legends, myths and sciences. There is an abundance of knowledge, a storyteller and a natural librarian. The natural world is the history of everything recorded in matter, thought and memory. There is an exchange of information here. In the reversed position, this is failing to communicate or pass on knowledge. This is bad or broken communications and loss of memory or silence. There we go. So I shall be back in a mo with the Queen of Pentacles, the last Queen. Okay, so the Queen of Pentacles. So she sat here in a beautiful lush garden. I think this is a mature goddess energy of house and home. I think the little rabbit there in the card represents fertility and abundance and um, in her higher realms this is a very practical and down-to-earth woman she's pragmatic trustworthy responsible fair and wise in all matters especially business and home she's tasteful she loves beauty and beautiful things she might like to earn and spend money but could be also be an energetic outdoorsy sort of person She's self-sufficient, hard-working, generous, receptive and sensual. She's earthy, grounded. She's practical, independent. Um, she could be found in finance or business or in a job that involves working outdoors. Or she could just, I say just, but I think it's an extremely valuable role. She could be a housewife, she could be a mother somebody who takes care of the home and somebody who enjoys the comforts of their home. In her lower levels, she could represent false prosperity, um, an overemphasis on material gains, seeking approval by material wealth and be suspicious and neglecting of responsibility. She could be fearful of failure, jealous, compulsive and even be a hoarder. In the cosmic tarot, we've got this beautiful queen of pentacles here and she's like something out of a um, a 20s film, isn't she? She looks like she's come from another age completely, very graceful 
and serene looking as if she's completely at home within her environment, a very grounded and calm person. In the Mary L deck, let's have a little look. Where are we? We've got this gorgeous card here where the Queen of Pentacles, it almost looks like she's a tree or she's part of a tree or the tree is growing into and out of her. Um, but obviously that's not what's written in the book because this book always surprises me. It's interesting. Um, and it says Hathor, that means House of Horus. She also appears in the Nine of Swords, where she is the embodiment of eternity. The earth is eternity, made material and flesh, and containing within it divine life force. Hathor was the goddess of all women, motherhood, joy, childbirth and love. She suckled the souls of the dead to sustain them on their journey to the underworld just like the sun at night or souls fallen into exile from God in the flesh. The Queen of Discs tends to those things, providing an environment where things can grow slowly and beautifully. There is pressure to, and pruning and shaping, as with the cultured rose garden behind her. I wish we can see there, can't we? It's in her garden with all of the elements in perfect harmony, that we live our lives, sustained by her milk, food, water, air and life. In the upright position, this represents gardens that reflect the care that they get. Reward for your blood, sweat and tears. Pressure makes diamonds. And we can see those diamonds falling like tears from her eyes. Patient labour and attention, you get what you work and pay for. Enjoy the life that you have built. Plant for future generations. Go outside, get some fresh air, get your hands dirty. <laughs> Material in abundance. In its reverse or lower realm, this card can represent unhealthy pressure, slow growth, lack of a stable environment physical weakness, softness, financial weakness, and not having enough. So there we go. I really enjoyed talking about the queens, actually. They're, um, they're really interesting cards. And um, I think out of all of them that I've talked about and looked at today, I like this one the most, actually, the Queen of Wands. She's just got that look about her, hasn't she? That, like, she's used to getting what she wants. She's a driving force and um, she won't take no for an answer. <laughs> That's what it looks like to me. I also kind of like the Queen of Swords here in The Raven, that they represented memory and thought, because that's very much the Queen of Swords, isn't it? So there we go. I hope you enjoyed that and I hope to see you very soon with the Kings, the last of the court cards, before we move on to the minor arcana. So thank you.